My friend Cindy is losing it. It's Sissy's Soup. Well, depression is a terrible thing. My friend Cindy has been having a really rough time of it lately. You see, she's been taking care of her daddy who has Alzheimer's disease for about the last six years. And she's doing it all by herself. She had a sister that was disabled, but she passed away. And then a few months later, her mama passed away. And then she realized her daddy was struggling. So she moved in with him and she took care of him day and night until just recently. A couple of months ago, her daddy went into assisted living because Cindy just couldn't physically do it anymore. But the six months before he went into assisted living, he was in between the hospital and rehab over and over, and she had to be there all the time to advocate for him and to take care of things and to make sure nobody was hurting him. I don't know how she did it. Well, like I said, he's moved into assisted living now, and they're doing a wonderful job with him. He's in a wonderful place, but Cindy's kind of lost and not knowing what to do with herself. So I called her up to check on her. And I said, darling, how are you doing? And she was kind of quiet at first. And then we talked for a minute and she said, you know, I'm feeling some depression. I said, well, honey, you've been through so very much. What, what does the main trouble seem to be? I understand depression isn't always related to things, but maybe it is for you. Let's talk about it. And she said, you know, I'm just having such a hard time getting back out there in the world and acting like a normal person. And I said, well, I might be the wrong person to talk to about being normal. But I said, let's see what we can do. I said, tell me, what exactly, what kind of things have you been doing to get back into the swing? She said, well, my cousin called me and she said, she told me, she said, you know the family history. And she said, I'd like for you to write it down for me. And what she was particularly interested in was the history of alcoholism in their family because they've had a lot of it. And I said, Cindy, that doesn't sound very uplifting, honey. And she said, well, it really is interesting. And she said, I found out there was a lot of physical abuse and emotional abuse. And she whispered to me, she said, an incest. I said, honey, that's just lovely. And then she told me, she said, and last week, I went to a memorial service for one of my friend's mothers, and she was a monster. We all knew it, but everybody acted like she was a saint. They were talking about her going to heaven and acting like she'd never done anything wrong a day in her life, and she was one of the cruelest people I ever met. I said, honey, that sounds stressful to me. But I was noticing that Cindy was kind of slurring her words. And you know, we were talking about alcoholism. It was only 11 o'clock in the morning, but I asked her straight out. I said, Cindy, you're slurring your speech a little bit. I said, are you drinking? She kind of giggled and she said, no, honey. She said, yesterday I had two wisdom teeth pulled out. I said, good Lord, and she started to get a little tickled, I could tell. And she laughed a little bit, and she said, and before that, I went to the dermatologist, and they took biopsies and cut two or three places off of my body. And then we both laughed a little bit. And she said, and you know what? My Aunt Pinky died. I said, Aunt Pinky, I said, I know who that is. She's the one that used to try to touch you when you were a little girl. She said, honey, she didn't just try to touch me, she touched me. 
And, and we both laughed a little at that. And she said, they want me to read a poem at her funeral. Well, then we both got tickled and we started to laugh. And then she, she got calmed down for a second and she said, when my cousin called me, she told me, she said, Pinky died. She said she finished her coffee, but she didn't get to finish her raisin toast. <laughs> well, we were both just about howling then. And we laughed and we laughed. And then all of a sudden she managed to say, the cat. And I thought, oh Lord, her cat's dead too. And, and she'd start laughing again and then she'd say the cat. And finally, she got herself calmed down enough and she said, the cat has mange. Well, we both started laughing again. And, and the two of us couldn't stop. It must have been two or three minutes. And finally, when we calmed down, I said, Cindy, I said, I didn't even know a cat could get the mange. And she said, evidently they can. Well, that set us off again and we started laughing. When we finally got a hold of ourselves, I said, honey, you need to do something fun just for you. Just for you, go do something fun just for a little break. It'll be okay. I said, I know you love the water. Why don't you go to the beach? Well, it was so quiet on the other end of the phone, I thought I'd hurt her feelings for a minute. And then in a real soft voice, she said, I'll probably get a sunburn. Oh, that Cindy, I think she's going to be all right. She's not just like clinically depressed. She's just got a lot of terrible things going on in her life. I'm going to have to take her out to dinner. Well, it's time for me to go. And as bad as I hate to, I have to say, it's good to quit talking to you. Now you turn the computer off and go on and do something else. Go on. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.